So anyway, that's me. I'm Jules, a uh, travel filmmaker. I, I as well, like one of my newest jobs is more on camera, doing MC work and, and a broadcast. I do a lot of TV interviews. Um, but it was something that I never really like thought of at the beginning. And now I'm finding that as like a fun thing to do. But, you know, we kind of we kind of change roles as we as we have advanced through our careers. And mostly the middle one, um, I feel like that's the most jewels because I'm always trying to look cute in my pink. I'm very, very girly, but I always have big, heavy cameras, and I have a huge backpack, <laughs> and I travel around kind of heavy because I always have all the gear. So, you know, that's like a little snapshot of me in Uzbekistan. Um, let's see, that would be Samarkand, Uzbekistan, in front of the most beautiful uh, square called Registan. And it was behind me that we had a major global once a year performance and I met the president of Uzbekistan <laughs> in that moment. So it was pretty silly. Um, also, the last photo is Denver. So I'm from Denver. And I always have a pink suitcase if you see me in the airport. <laughs> That's me. So, um, so, oh, there's Uzbekistan again. So yeah, so I've been lucky and um, also just crazy to chase this dream of trying to make money traveling and telling stories. So it's a job that I invented, and luckily in the in most recent years, I've been paid a lot to work for different brands and do the same thing, travel and tell stories. So one, one brand I worked with recently was called Princess Cruises. Uh, we went to Mexico, and they asked me to bring my family, because who goes on a cruise by yourself? <laughs> you know you can. Actually, there are singles cruises. Actually, yeah, I should do that next time. <laughs> But they were like, you know, usually you go with people. So I was like, how about mom and dad? So that was cute that they joined me and they let me um, make videos the whole time. And they were like, can we just like hang out? <laughs> so sometimes people don't want to be in your videos, um, but they are willing. So I get that. I've also worked with um, Bumble. I was, uh, I did an online video competition one summer, or one, yeah, one summer. Um, there was a job on the internet says, who wants to travel the world and get paid using Bumble next year. And I was like, me, I want to do that. So I applied, I, I, I filled out an application, filled out, I did a video interview, a video audition. And six months later, after all of the interviews, I was one of two people they hired to travel the world and tell stories for Bumble. So it was a pretty fun job. And unfortunately, it started in 2020, January. So we didn't get all the way around the world, but we did, well, actually we went to Singapore and then we went to uh, Bali and then we went to, where did we go to? Whistler, Canada. So we went halfway around the world, <laughs> most of the way. I'll tell you more about that as well. Um, but yeah, so I've had a lucky, a lucky time doing some fun stuff, um, more important than all the serious stuff. Um, and so I want to share with you some lessons learned from these things. Uh, so my brand, everything I do is Traveling Jewels. And um, everything I do in this space for video production content, because I've always been a nerd at like all the technical and industry stuff. So I thought it would make sense to put that in one blog and then put all my travel stuff in one blog. So I'm kind of enjoying having kind of two different businesses at the moment. But they're kind of the same, but they're different. <laughs> um, and so I want to give you a little snapshot into a day, a day in the life or a week in the life of Traveling Jewels. I won't make Picture you this. It. Elephants, tuk-tuks, You guys tell me what is good for loudness. And the new oh, Canon EOS R5C. Um, okay, cool. Okay, I'm that's good. Okay, cool. Thanks. Video pros, are we ready for an adventure or Thank what? You. Hey there, Juliana. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I just didn't want to touch everything, but I tried. I, I considered it. <laughs> cool. Sorry, guys. I was like, I think it's too quiet. Can you, could you hear okay? I would just try to shut up and listen. Um, so that was a little adventure in Sri Lanka in 10 days. Thank you guys so much. Uh, where I was video blogging the adventure of being in Sri Lanka. But haha, <laughs> funny. I mean, awesome. I got to try this brand new camera. This was about a year ago that it just came out, the brand new Canon EOS R5C. And um, I was also video blogging how I blog. <laughs> it's like inception, like meta, right? So I was like, I was video blogging me blogging. And it was really an interesting experience because I am so experienced at it, but it was also complicated because I basically carried another camera so that I could hand it to someone or put it on a tripod and film me 
filming stuff. So it was an interesting like adventure trying to do everything, but also like I felt so equipped because I was like, this is what I do. So it was a fun, it was a fun experience. Um, but it, it sh I think I think the piece um, really shows kind of the the spirit of what I require is that, dude, I'm doing all the things. I'm producing, shooting, writing, editing, hosting, right? And I'm in all kinds of environments. And so I, I kind of love that too, is just, if, if I could put you in my backpack and take you with me, that's what it would be like. <laughs> so I'm, I hope you had fun. Are you, are you hot and sweaty now? <laughs> um, so, so we're gonna talk about vlogging today and telling your own story, and that's the best part, is that you are in control of your story. You are, you get to decide what people, you, you think, you decide what the storyline is, what elements are included, what elements are not, and how you want them to feel. Do I want you to feel inspired and excited? Do I want you to feel bored and tired, right? You, you are in, in control of all of those things. So I wanted to show you this funny photo. When I was, uh, let's see, this is October 2012, so 11 years ago, I was running around vlogging like this. Do you see anyone doing that? <laughs> it's kind of insane when I think about it. So that was the 5D, Canon 5D Mark III um, with a monopod um, and like a 24 to 105 lens and a, a Rode mic. Um, I think there's a light on there, I think. <laughs> Point. There's probably a, a small light attached because uh, I can see at the top there's a V-mount. Um, there's a handheld strap for my shoulder. I'm wearing a fanny pack. But like hardcore, this was like really, like somebody here really wants to be a vlogger, but there weren't really lightweight little cameras with flip screens at the time, you know? Oh, that might not be a light. That's a monitor. I think I'm looking at myself through an additional monitor. So anyway, um, things have become, come a long way, and I just appreciate that now, that things are much easier than, than they used to be, and um, you don't have to be as buff. <laughs> <laughs> carrying everything. Um, now that's something more, more normal looking. It's like an actual selfie stick um, and a lightweight camera, but very similar, but man, it, it, it improved a bunch. Um, I, I, you know, I call myself all kinds of different crazy titles. My LinkedIn, if you've ever Googled me, has like one million titles, because I want people to know that I can do a lot of stuff, but I also want, if someone was to Google, they would see that, like if they're Googling Talent, they find talent. If you're Googling producer, you find me too. If you're doing filmmaker, you find me. Content creator, you know what I mean? So for LinkedIn, that's my purpose. But in reality, you are doing lots of jobs. Um, I like the last one, Mad Hatter. <laughs> you're just like crazy changing hats because you wear a lot of hats. Um, the last one on the first column, Predator Shredditor. <laughs> What? Like, I don't want to be a predator, but like a producer editor, we were for a while calling that a predator. That's probably so like 2018 but, or 2008. I don't know. Both of those years did happen. I don't know. But we've come up with different language. Backpack journalists became now in a TV newsroom multimedia journalist. Um, we used to call them like one man band, one woman band. So. You know, these words are always changing, um, but I like the idea that you get to be in charge of the whole story. So do you guys work for a company? Have you ever been a part of a big company where my first internship was like one job and like 4,500 people like, you know, all had to get the TV news on the, the air every day. And it was like, cool, that was fun, but this is so much more fun when you get to do every part of the process. So it's some responsibility, but it's so rewarding when you are in charge of pitching a story to yourself or to someone else who will hire you. You are producing a story, um, meaning you are, you know, thinking through like what, what, who are the characters, what are the experiences that we're going to have on this adventure, where is it, where is it located, right? Um, all of those kinds of things like you have to decide and research. You also are going to be in charge of shooting it. So, you know, are you going to bring this backpack or that backpack? Are you bringing more people or are you going to do it alone? Um, all of those things are all your job. Writing and editing, I often write before I leave the house, but sometimes I do the writing after, after it's been shot. I'll, I'll go ahead and write the script later. I think either model works based on your experience. Um, and then we're also, you know, in charge of sharing it now. It's like, I have to put it on Instagram and I have 
like, it's not really my job, but you know how popular it is, how many likes? Like, somebody's gonna ask, so how many followers do you have? And it's like, that's not my job. And then you're like, oh, I think it is. So that's, that's a lot of jobs for one person. Um, so, so my recommendation is don't be too overwhelmed. You can do it all, but you have to, one, have manage your own expectations, and two, think through that um, we will learn everything over time. You don't have to wake up tomorrow and do it all. But if one year or one month or one week or one day, you say, I'm going to learn filmmaking, and I really want to learn cameras and why we have different lenses, then do that. And after you graduate from that or that gets boring, then you look at the thing and say, man, I would love to learn more about how to run a business because I need to learn how to sell these videos, <laughs> right? There's all these different things that are in the, in the direction and you can choose which things look fun for you and which thing you do next and then the next thing. So that's just one thing after another. Before you go, here are all of the most important things to think through. Like, okay, so we're gonna go vlog uh, something cool in Las Vegas. Um, and we have to first scout it. And, and my friend works on an amazing travel TV show called Samantha Brown's Places to Love. And they do like a, I think 30 minutes or one hour on a place every episode. And the thing that they do is one guy goes out to that location for one week and explores it and meets all these people and comes back and says, hey, this is, this is the cool stuff we should do when we bring back the seven or eight people for, for filming the show later. They don't want to waste the money while the, like eight people are there, right? And, and so when you're vlogging by yourself, that's really one possible, but you know, maybe you don't really need to, to go on the trip twice because some of the magic is seeing it the first time for yourself, right? So I like to scout it online or on Instagram just to start getting a sense of like, what does it look like? Um, you know, is this, a, is this a right next to the highway? Is this, <laughs> is this um, near a beach? Uh, is it crowded? You know, just kind of start to get a feel for it. Then you can go ahead and start planning your visit. You can go ahead and, um, like say you want to film a restaurant. If you go at 10 a.m., it might be closed. But if you wait until 10.59, right within the doors open, you get the place to yourself for maybe an hour until it actually gets full at like noon, right? So whatever time you go is going to completely affect the shots that you're going to get. And you probably know this if you work in TV is that um, you're, if you want the, this is a poppin' restaurant, you got to come here, it's where all the people go. If you want that kind of story, then you should go at t noon. But if you want um, actually a chance to film and talk to the chef, they're not going to talk to you when it's super busy, right? So you need to go at a little bit later or earlier time so that other people will actually like play with you. <laughs> so think through your production, um, just like, like a tr typical production. But, um, but because you're by yourself, everything that you're learning, even if you learn cool facts, you can write down your talking points. Because if you learn a cool fact, like, oh, this restaurant is from 1873, and these beignets are been made by hand by this guy since the beginning of time, and it's his grandma's recipe. If you learn that while you're pre-producing, those will be your talking points later while you're talking, and you'll look really cool because you know everything. So it kind of behooves you to do both parts, and that's the beauty of this job. Um, and then last, we're going to do uh, talk about your gear. So I'll, that'll be the next thing. What's up? Questions? Um, how often do you film yourself versus working with PR? Ooh, good question. She says, how much do you work by yourself versus PR? That's a great question because I'm glad you asked that. Because when I travel alone and I just have this idea, like maybe I saw on Instagram, like this would be a cool restaurant or a cool place to film you know sometimes you just go and you make a video but sometimes and I would say more often than not is somebody emails me and says hey did you know that Meow Wolf is opening in Denver this weekend no I didn't do you want to come sure you know so it's that conversation I get a lot of emails from press PR people that I just ignore because it's over overwhelming I can't possibly even respond to everybody 
But the ones that interest me, I might write them back and say, oh, cool, what, what's going on? Um, or sometimes they'll invite me on a trip for a whole week or five days. And they'll say, hey, have you ever been to Morocco? No. You know what I mean? So sometimes there's some really great opportunities that the PR people, first of all, let you know about. And then second, sometimes they pay for everything. Usually they do if it's a press trip. Um, but their mission is to get the word out about the whole play, the whole country, or about one hotel, or about whatever. And you have to decide, are you comfortable with sharing that message? And sometimes you have to tell them, like, I'm going to say negative or positive stuff. And is that okay? And if, you know, that, like that conversation is individual. But for me, I, I first of all wouldn't go to a place that I'm not interested in. If I have a bad experience, I would probably say something or just not cover it and not mention it. But there's definitely like a level of ethics, which we learned about over there, is just, you know, deciding at what stage, you know, you're gonna cover something and in what light and how, how yeah, how, how that is expected. Because if you don't like something, maybe you don't cover it at all. And you just go home and you're like, done. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, it's an interesting business is the PR people suggesting stuff to you. So they, they get credit. Um, and sometimes, sometimes they have budget to pay you and sometimes they want editorial coverage. So they just want you to do it for free. And then you have to figure out if you're making your, your career through other, other things like ads or other income or if you need to get paid like like as production because then it's a different conversation usually the PR people are you getting more than you asked for um, <laughs> uh, but sometimes the if, if PR people are if you're talking money they need to now hand you to marketing <laughs> and then the marketing people will talk to you so anyway I can we could talk all day about this stuff but I, this is a great question because they're like how do you how do you decide about the stories yes the PR people are, are a golden ticket sometimes. They teach you what's new and stuff that's coming out before it's even open. Um, OK, I'm assuming you guys want to talk about gear a little bit. Do you guys want to, are you tired of gear? Or you want to hear about some camera gear stuff for vlogging? Yeah? <laughs> Yay, I love it. Cool. What's that? Oh, review, OK. Yeah, totally. I mean, do, what, do you guys, when, when I say take your camera with you, could you clap when you see a camera that you own? Could you clap for me and could you keep clapping? Yay, okay, clapping. <laughs> a point and shoot, doesn't have to be this model, just like a style. <laughs> um, mirrorless cameras, oh good, clapping, cool, cool. This one, or, this one's a full frame mirrorless. Yeah, it's good, clapping. Um, this one is a, it's a hybrid, it's, it's ha the ha this is the one I showed you the video on, half camera, half cinema camera, there's only one. <laughs> How about this one, an actual cinema camera, something, do you have a, a big camera that's video? Usually they don't also take photos, just video. Do you have that? Yeah. Clapping, cool. <laughs> Thanks guys, I love it. Um, or a drone, who got drones? Nice, awesome, very cool. So um, whatever camera you have, these are all ones that I've worked with that I think work well for vlogging, and I'm, I only shoot Canon, so I can't tell you about other ones, but I, I have worked with some Sony in the past. So obviously, love cameras of all types. There's not any discrimination, because um, although I will tell you, there are some reasons why not to use one's other ones. Let me show you. Um, your camera, whatever one you have, has to have these things for vlogging. You really want to make sure it's lightweight, because it can't be like a brick. <laughs> it has to have a very angle flip screen, a flip screen that flips all the way around, 180 degrees. Some of them tilt, but they don't go all the way around, and I can't handle that. Uh-uh, it's not going to work for vlogging. Or you need the monitor. Yet another thing, I do not approve. Um, you also need an audio jack. A lot of those small point and shoots look cool, and they're a great price point until you try to plug a microphone in. Haha, <laughs> there's no audio jack. So. If you don't know what camera, the list that I showed you is one, all of those have some type of uh, audio jack, and that's sort of, for me, why a vlogging camera is a vlogging camera versus a camera. Um, and then finally, you don't have to change lenses. I mean, even your phone has a wide angle lens, but I do recommend the wide angle because I have super short arms, and it can, I cannot get it far enough away from me, 
If you're a guy with long arms, I get you. You could probably get away with that 24 to 105 that I had that weird monopod thing. But if you're, if you want that, if you don't want like the super close up, uh, a wide, a wide angle lens is going to help. And that's going to also mean you, if you want a full frame sensor, some of those bigger, more expensive cameras, their sensors are large. The full frame gives you more of a wider image and therefore the camera appears farther away from you. So some of those smaller sensor cameras, um, just they, f they give you that close up just because of that kind of camera. So for me, any little, any little detail to get that camera looking farther is helpful. Um, I like to change lenses, not a must have, but a nice to have. Um, I want a camera that takes photos, so that's why I like the C70, the more cinematic ones. I always loved shooting those. I've shot them for many documentary film projects. But as soon as I became more of a vlogger, I just didn't take pictures because I only had a video camera in my hands. And then I never had good thumbnails and I didn't have Instagram photos. So for me, having that combo hybrid camera has made a lot of difference, being able to kind of be everywhere all the time and just switch from photo to video to photo to video. So um, anyway, I, I, I still like the bigger cameras when I'm shooting just a documentary on some restaurant. But when I'm in it, it just becomes a little harder without all the extra stuff. Um, also, Wi-Fi remote. If you've seen any of my talks, I'm a huge proponent of having that. I'll show you what that looks like and an intervalometer. I'll show you more too. So, whoa, that's kind of my gear um, that kind of comes along with me. And it, I definitely tailor it. I don't have like a one-stop shop every time. And this might feel like overkill to some of you. <laughs> and it might feel like underkill to some people. So it just, it's all in perspective of what am I doing? You know, am I doing it for, for fun? Am I doing it for money? Am I going on vacation? Am I going for work? That kind of vibe. So I first of all recommend always for vlogging, because we want to feel fun and light on our feet, feel like you're climbing up a mountain. You don't want to carry too much stuff. And so whatever you're bringing with you, feel like you wouldn't die if you had it on your back for more than an hour. If you're going to the airport and you're already pain and tired, like, uh, -uh some of that's gonna have to stay in your hotel room. <laughs> um, so when you, when you travel light, you're gonna be happy. And I've made this mistake many times. I've looked like a, a human mule <laughs> where truthfully, it is all I can carry. Oh, look, I'm literally carrying it all, but like who wants to travel like that, right? or to just generally be in the world and try to be like a human. So I don't recommend putting as much as possible on, but again, those are different times. Now we have a lot more better equipment and let me show you some recommendations. So one, um, some of the essentials. So if you're just getting started or you're just starting to spend money in this area, here are the kind of the most important parts of your kit. It's gonna be the microphone, the dead cat, that fuzzy thing that like just looks kind of ugly, but that thing really helps it sound good when it's windy. And um, the Rode VidMic Pro Plus I have found is usually really good. As long as it's plugged in all the way and it's, I'm holding it, I have noticed that sound is usually as good as the lavalier that I'm wearing, as long as I'm not in the middle of a concert or somewhere just crazy busy where it's really loud. Um, now, generally though, if you're gonna put on a tripod and you're gonna be a few more feet away, I don't find that microphone's quite as good just because of the distance. So um, it, it's up to you what your standards are, but I really like having a, a, a lavalier that I wear. So this one actually has an SD card that records onto my body, and it records two tracks. You can set the decibel levels for the main track, and then it can record a second track, a safety track that's six or 12 decibels less, so that in case you start screaming, or get excited, you don't ruin your audio. You have your backup track. Especially since I don't video blog and listen to myself the whole time. I check it once, I set it, and I forget it. Um, so, so there is error. It could, I could mess up because I'm not constantly listening, but the safety track gives me a little bit of confidence that like, okay, it's gonna work out. And that's why I have the two. I like to have two audio sources because in case something goes wrong, you know, I'm constantly putting the backpack, putting the camera in the backpack and taking it out. And in case that little microphone comes out like a little bit and it's not completely connected, you lose all your audio, right? So I always like to have the two sources so that I always have a backup in case. 
I've made mistakes. Um, also, the wide angle lens, I shared that with you. They come as small as like a prime lens where you cannot zoom, but um, they've also, they have a little bit bigger lenses that zoom that are stable, stabilized. The middle one I really love because it's stable, but it's not quite as fast as the big one, but that one is, is like a professional mom, you know, mama lens. So I often am recently downgrading some of my professional equipment that I've used for years in the, in, in the film space for more lighter weight um, options that are, are just great new inventions because for me, I'm prioritizing size and weight over you know, having like slightly more, more fancier picture and just slightly better you know, options. It's just, you have to choose what you wanna do. But for vlogging, the, the EF lenses and the bigger lenses are kind of a lot to have many options. If you have only one lens, maybe it's great. Just depends what you're doing. I mean, when I'm when I know I'm going to film in a dark bar, I would prioritize like speed, a fast lens. So it just kind of depends. Um, and also, we're going to oops, sorry. Also, some essentials would be the uh, the, the the camera. How are you going to support it? Uh, I really like to use um, a gimbal, but again, it's a little bit heavier, so I have to think about it. Am I filming a, a cool hotel, or am I filming a beautiful scenery place, or some interesting architecture? Maybe I'll bring the gimbal. If I'm on a walking tour, if I'm not gonna stop, but we're walking all day, I'll bring the gimbal. But if I'm just like trying to be on the road all day and I'm tired, I'm not gonna carry you know, too much on my back, I might, I might go for handheld and no, no, no support, because I'm just gonna you know, hold it when I'm ready. So um, the first two are great options for phone, and the middle one could be phone or video, the, the selfie stick. Uh, that one's good if you have short arms, you can just get the camera a bit further away. And I like that one because it has a, a ball head. So you can adjust the angle that this camera points at you. That is a deal breaker. Like I've seen a lot of great $5 selfie sticks, but they break and you cannot you know, adjust the angle. So this is, an actual one that's maybe like $50, but it will never break and it's like, it will hold like your biggest camera. So I find that's a pretty good one. So yeah, so those are my essentials. Um, any questions on gear so far? Are you done? <laughs> yes, question? Oh, good question. Yeah, you know, when, um, he, so when Snapchat came out, they had glasses uh, that, that you could like record. I had those and that was so fun because you could walk around and be like, ha I'm filming you. And it was just sunglasses. And um, it, those just like never went anywhere. I think they maybe will come back, which I think would be cool. But what a neat invention. But the question was, what do you think about 360? And on my list, like I've had the GoPro 360 and I've just, it, like I didn't use it, I ended up selling it because it was too uh, early, it was too annoying to like deal with the footage in post. <laughs> to, like, like just my computer would like choke because it wouldn't like export. So I would like to try it again. Insta360 is seriously on my shopping list because I love that you have that selfie stick that disappears um, in the technology. So yeah, I think 360 is very cool. For a vlogger, how cool to see yourself and see what you're seeing all at once. So I think it's a, a, an amazing style to film and capture. Uh, the audio concerns me, but I think um, the is it, there's no microphone jack, right? For that for that one you just showed, is there an audio jack? Um, but if you're willing to wear that separate audio, which I'm already doing, I could easily match it later. So it might not be an issue um, for the way. Yeah, for the way that I'm doing it. But some people want to have the audio connected, so yeah, I'm just curious. Oh, is that the new one, the X3? Very cool. Do you love it? Oh my gosh. It's on my wish list. <laughs> but also, I don't see myself publishing, the, like I've published a couple 360 videos which are novel and fun, but like I don't know if the future of vlogging will be all 360 experiential. I do think Google, like being able to 360 any location is very cool. I just don't know if it'll be a niche thing or if it'll be an everybody thing, but I like it. Uh, 
Yeah, because it's all smooth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes, I was at CES. The sticks are huge. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. This, he's very impressed with the stabilization and um, the, 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 the selfie stick can disappear, but at CES I was there and they had one like the size of a room. You could just literally like extend to like the ceiling and therefore you can do cool like fake drone shots because it's just something waving at the end of your pole, right? <laughs> that's a great suggestion. What's your question? Uh, I was at, uh, I'm a Uh-huh, sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it, it, it's it, any camera changes the experience, um, especially if you're with people that are not video blogging, because they're like hiking without you and you're back there like trying to get the shot, like, oh, let me get a cutaway. <laughs> it, it, I do find vlogging with other people can be challenging because my primary goal is to get a great story, but if your primary goal is to hang out with other people, you're gonna get a story, maybe not a great one, and but you will still hang out with the other people kind of thing. So yeah, does the selfie stick get in the way? I'm, I prefer not to use a selfie stick. That's why these little inventions with just a little bit more width on the prime lens, that, that it's very inexpensive, that having that prime lens wide angle is the thing I need not to bring the selfie stick. If I had a lens that was a little tighter, I would need a selfie stick to get further away from me. And, and I would say like selfie sticks are actually illegal for some places. Like if you go to the, to see, to the Louvre and want to see Mona Lisa, you cannot bring the selfie stick because people will smack into the artwork by accident with the thing. So it's funny that like there are definitely places that they don't let you bring equipment in general, like tripods, because people will trip if you bring a tripod. So I do, I do like the feeling of the authentic, the authenticity of a handheld shot. As long as it's not terribly ugly and handheld, like you can't watch it because it's so shaky. But if it's just like a little bit shaky, I think people appreciate it because they know it's real. I don't really like to do authentic, or I don't love to do cinematic gimbal shots for everything. One, because it's heavy, but two, because I don't think everything should be cinematic. I don't want to tell every story. It's like, this is perfect, this is perfect, this is perfect, you know? It's like if I want you to dream about this like cool, hotel, I'll do that, but I don't really want every place to feel like sexy hotel. <laughs> yes, one more question. Yeah, I was going to ask you about isolation though. Um, do you use like the stabilizers in between them, or most people just like stick it in between the lens and just keep holding it down? Well, yeah, a lot of cameras now have in-body stabilization. Um, you can see a lot of lenses have extra stabilization in the lens, and the combo of that, you have double stabilization. So I do look at that with what gear I'm using. And, um, but yeah, the gimbal is offering stabilization as like a third option. So yeah, there's a lot of like different ways you can get it and a lot of fine detail. If you like to watch YouTube videos, people will get so picky about every little like bump and things. So yeah, I think it's fun to think about, but I, I'm not super picky. I just, I know my style is, is this a cinematic moment or is this gonna be, uh, you know, more of a handheld like raw moment? And I'll, let me show you a few more because I think maybe that will help you understand some of the storytelling because I think through what the story will be and then pick the gear. And even it, I'll bring all this stuff with me, but I'll leave some of it in the hotel room depending on what the next activity is. So I don't have like the everyday bag because I don't want to carry stuff I don't need. <laughs> so I like to be prepared for anything, but my needs are always changing. If you're a vlogger in dentist's office and that's all your video blogging, then you know exactly what to expect. <laughs> then you can have a kit that's always the same. So it depends what you're vlogging. If you're doing restaurants, it might be easier because all you, you, the restaurants may be similar when you're sitting down, when you're indoor lighting, you know, there might be some, but if you're gonna do a lot of variety, you wanna kinda have a lot of options for me. Thanks for these great questions, you guys. You're really making me think here, I love it.
any kind of vlogger, I think you're going to find yourself in a pinch a lot, like, ah, I don't have anything. What do I do? And I'm constantly leaning against stuff like this and just using the wall to like stabilize my hand or um, I'm holding it like with my elbows in against my body so that I have a stabilizer here. <laughs> if I'm here, it's wiggly and heavy, but here against your body, it's more stable. Um, I'm often using the floor. The floor has like a cool texture to it sometimes, and I, I like that as one option. Like I'm walking in and you see the floor. Um, sometimes I'll put it on a chair or a desk or a, uh, like a, like a, yeah, like anything, any like bench or or um, what are those things? Like when there's a balcony and there's like a a, le a ledge. Yeah, there's all kinds of cool places. Um, I've even used like escalators to just pretend I have a gimbal because I'm standing on an escalator and you're just going up. <laughs> so you'll find being on a bus or being on a train, you get cool shots through the window. Um, even I've ridden on the sightseeing bus in the roof a two-story bus and you get shots just driving around. So <laughs> you can use a lot of interesting things that are free. For vlogging, you can get away with it, right? If you're trying to do a cinematic movie, they might like laugh at you and getting on the sightseeing bus. <laughs> um, so, so, what, so do you guys want to know? I, I already showed you what's in my bag. If you're really a nerd, I'm going to go fast. Um, but I just wanted to show you like specifically some people love to see the, the actual items. Um, I just put the, the little labels so you know what they are if you do care. But this is, the, this is often the stuff I carry, the minimal, because it's the least heavy. Um, and I always like to have ND filters because I never know if I'm going to be inside, outside, or if it's sunny. Um, but I also bring these other lenses when I know I'm going to shoot more beautiful far away shots, more artistic shots. Um, I have, so, you know, it just depends on the scene. I'll bring additional shots. And these are all the more affordable RF lenses. But sometimes I'll switch out those and I'll do like an EF lens. Or maybe I'll switch that out and I'll do another camera, a second camera like you saw in that first video I was shooting. Even though it looked like I had one camera, I also had the second camera in my bag. So it was kind of a lot of, a lot of things. But I just like to have the professional stuff. This is stuff that I don't bring everywhere, but per the right situation, if I need a light and a light stand, that's the one I like. Sometimes I'll bring a drone if I know I have permission. Um, I also have like the long lens, which is beautiful for, for more like safari, kind of far away, you know, zooming in on things. Um, and if I use my GoPro, you really need that audio uh, microphone thing, the extra media module, and then you can talk to it. It sounds night and day better than having the GoPro with no sound extra. Now, it's no longer waterproof when you have the microphone. So I, can't, I could I'd bring it snowboarding, but I'm not going to take it scuba diving, you know? <laughs> um, is the Insta360 waterproof? Yes. So you could easily bring it like snorkeling? Oh, man, that would be great. Ah, OK, cool. Fun, fun, fun. So yeah, so I'll definitely add that to the to the get gear list next year. <laughs> um, so yeah, so those are just a few things that I've been putting in my bag. And if you're brand new and you're just getting started, this is a set of slightly different stuff that I find pretty affordable. So this is the kit that I would say might be a good place to start. Um, the, if you, again, if you're interested in Canon, this uh, camera, the M50 Mark II, is now they reinvented it for the for the R line. So it's called the R50. But they have not reinvented this lens, the 11 to 22, yet. So as soon as they do, I'll be so excited to recommend the new stuff. Um, but I do think this is a great starter kit. A lot of vloggers are using this um, M50 Mark II with the 11 to 22. And, and it's such a lightweight, uh, ideal, like going anywhere camera. The essentials, this is all the non-camera stuff. No matter what you're bringing, I always bring this stuff because it's like just to survive in the wild. <laughs> the stuff on the first column is stuff for camera gear that like, for example, what is that white um, circle thing? That's medical tape. I tape that to my skin so that I don't have to look like a TV news reporter when I'm vlogging. So I tape the microphone on my body and then I can still have a lavalier. And then the, the, the like say the black, um, uh, gaff tape, I just bring in case something breaks. I have to tape it together. 
I, I don't often like Greek stuff out, like brand labels or anything, but um, you know, there's little pr purposes for everything, spare memory cards. Uh, the chamois actually is, it, it, it absorbs water. If you're going snowboarding, you need to wipe off some drips and stuff. Um, bongo ties are always useful. And then all the stuff on the right hand side is just like that, like personal stuff that I find like actually useful. Yeah. Mandatory. Yes, the, p the pink lipstick is mandatory. <laughs> and a pink water bottle, pink luggage tag, pink carabiner, mandatory. <laughs> but that one, you should definitely bring a business card. Um, doesn't have to be like registered under your business, uh, but I recommend if you're gonna do this as a business, put all of your expenses on a separate card, even if it's a personal card, but one you don't put personal expenses on. Because then you always know like this trip or this, this trip to B&H, all of your, all your potential business expenses are all on one credit card. You're just sorting things out at the moment you buy and it's easier for taxes and just knowing like, you know, hey, I made $500 on this video, but I spent $1,000 on gear. <laughs> so you just have an easier account for like, okay, next time I'm gonna charge $2,000 because I didn't make enough. You know, you just kind of know how that goes. So, so yeah, that's the gear. Okay, so we're gonna move on now. We're talking about story, and definitely I think uh, this is the fun part about vlogging, is you get to come up with an idea and then suddenly you can change your mind. So this is actually a, um, uh, this is a Bumble story, because see I'm in the yellow and there's the yellow suitcase. So this, uh, this is actually an, ex so you know I told you I went around the world with Bumble, and um, let me just show you a little s snippet on, on, on what that adventure looked like. Okay, that's it, <laughs> he's here. We just had the most best. <laughs> he knows I'm gonna love it. Night dancing. <laughs> oh. Hey, I'm Traveling Jules, and I'm on a mission to make amazing connections <laughs> around the world as Bumble's global connector bee. Real talk, I'm a little terrified. Okay, so I have downloaded a few dating apps, and I've deleted them all. You know, it's not easy to put yourself out there, but you gotta take chances. No. No. Mm, no. Oh, hi. He's cute. Yes. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. I'm so excited to get out there and meet people in a new way. You'd be perfect. Oh, so I wrote prefect. No, no. <laughs> when you're looking for love, you've got bumble dates. So we got pork rib. So if you come to Texas, you gotta have some barbecue. This is the best. Cheers. Cheers. If you're looking for a buddy, you've got Bumble BFF. We don't normally use chopsticks. Oh, really? We use okay. our hands. Mm. It tastes better this way, actually. And if you're looking for professional connections, you've got Bumble Biz. TikTok is the thing now. This is like a really good time to blow up. I can't promise it'll be smooth sailing. I can't find my passport. I have no idea where it is. But no matter the adventure, we'll walk away with a great story. Oh, we got company on my backpack. <laughs> I got tail whipped. <laughs> Oh, he took my sunglasses! No! Seriously? And one thing that I love about Bumble is that women make the first move. So it's super empowering. No matter what you're looking for, you can make some real genuine connections. So let's do this together. So that was the little highlight of my adventure with Bumble, traveling around the world, literally filming my own show while I'm experiencing real life, trying to meet somebody amazing and some business connections and friend connections. What an adventure. And just, I wanted to share that with you because as a storyteller, I was literally like actually swiping with people that would be interesting, but also thinking through like, would this be a good person to meet? What would we do? Like, what, you know, would we go to a coffee shop? What if every date's at a coffee shop? How boring is that? You know, like producing, thinking through like, oh, we could go see monkeys. I actually, I actually have never been to Bali. I'd like to go to the monkey place anyway. You know, just really trying to think through like the story, my life, <laughs> um, the people, trying to tell real people, do you mind if I video you? like on our date, <laughs> right? I had a, there was a couple guys in there who were like, no, 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 you can't. And so I'd film the feet. I would film our food. And then by the end, they were like, okay, you can film. I was like, oh, 
thank you. <laughs> but they, they were kind of shy at first, and they didn't want to fill the paperwork out. And I was like, see, bringing your own like production, bringing the release forms into your real life, it's a little weird. But I had to think through story, and there was a lot that got that shifted based on what actually happened. And there was a lot that shifted, too, in the edit. Like, yeah, that happened. That was cool, but it doesn't make sense in the, in the you know. So it just that that's the kind of thing when you're vlogging is, is you come up with a story before you leave the house. You come home with a different story. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes not. And it's your job and your privilege to kind of come up with what makes sense. What are you comfortable sharing? You know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, it's just a fun, it's a fun opportunity. You have a couple questions. Nobody likes that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, how, how, how did you get comfortable doing that? It, it's so hard. It's so, if you ever see someone and you're like kind of giggle inside, like they look silly, but then even you know in your own heart, like, I want to do that. And then you're like, that is so hard because it's, it's never good. It's never comfortable to do that, especially in front of people that you know and also in front of people you don't know. <laughs> Um, and, and I like to do it alone so nobody sees me or makes fun of me but 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 in that case I would sometimes have to really plan ahead like I need my I need to hear me say something and I don't want to say it twice to look like I'm doing it for the camera so I'd have to think through like I need to get it out and then say something like where should we have dinner you know instead of being like where should we no where should we have dinner where, wait wait let me do that again could we have dinner where do you want to have dinner with me <laughs> <laughs> right? You have to like pre-produce your own thing. <laughs> um, you're, you have a question? That's so fun. I actually have a question. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, working, you have good experience working for a company, though. You understand production. To do it for yourself, I, I would you just yeah it's it's official when you have your own business you have a card that you know is only those expenses for that business and so if you book a flight and you know it's for that business i mean you have to talk to your tax person how many flights you can do every year <laughs> that kind of thing until you're making money but um but yeah just just transitioning into just committing to doing it you know it's easy to quit it's easy to do half of it but to really like say, say on this trip during this one meal we're going to video blog this and I'm gonna walk away with a video and I'm gonna go home and actually edit it. You know, it's just a matter of willpower at some point. But, but not say I'm gonna film the whole trip, because that's a lot. Pick one thing, one experience, one rafting part, one rafting adventure, or one food tour, or one hotel tour, and just start with that. Don't try to do the whole trip. Oh, from one business to another? I would say, um, thanks for coming. Yeah, I would say for sure, like, it's something that once you start making money at it, you'll start making time to do it. And then the more, you know, especially too, as you're saving money from your real job, you know, it's a matter of kind of balancing, like, when is the right time? But I wouldn't just quit your job and try it if you need the money to, like, pay your rent and you're going to die if you don't have this, you know? You know what I mean? But, like, I think it's just to so ease into it with one paid job. You, you take paid time off or you reschedule your vacation. The second job, you know, it's, I think the more money that comes in, the more easier it is to, to start weaning off of the real job, you know? But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I luckily didn't have a real job that I had to quit. I just like had to make money. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's an interesting business for sure. So anyway, I just wanted to show you the Bumble thing as an example of story and what, what, what works as a story and what doesn't. Now I wanna give you some, some basic tr tactics as you're going through your experience. Like let's say you're with me in that restaurant and we wanna go ahead and um, 
get our cameras out? Well, first step for vlogging is don't get your camera out. <laughs> the first step is just to observe. Observe what's happening. Decide what fits in your story. Don't fit, film everything because it's so easy to go, ah, oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, and you go home and you have no idea what to do because you have too much footage. So if you say I'm a food blogger, that's actually awesome because I know anything food is on the table, anything like every plane ride, every hotel, you can ignore, right? So if you could start with one thing, do that. Then um, I would recommend you to th focus on action, just like any camera stuff. You know, we always, where do your eyes go? You know, you see someone pick up a hammer and then smack it down, that's cool. You see something with flames like sizzling, that's cool. So look at what interests you with your eyes and plan ahead like I wanna film that. So if I'm sitting at the restaurant and I'm, look, I'm in Wisconsin, I'm eating these delicious cheese curds and I just ordered them and I know if Wisconsin is famous for cheese curds. I know when the cheese curds come to my table, I'm gonna film it arriving because the action of it arriving is way better than it just sitting there getting soggy and they're half eaten. <laughs> it's that first, like right before she comes, oh no, okay, camera's ready, it's dropping down, you know? And every once in a while you have to ask, could you do that again? And they're like, okay. But try to get it the first time, because they're gonna be weird, and they're gonna be like, what, you mean here? Put it here? We should, ooh, my hand's in the weird, they're gonna get all weird about it. So if you can actually get the first time they put the beer down in Germany, or the cheese curds in Wisconsin, you're gonna get the best, coolest shot. So just plan ahead for the action. Also, you can create the action if you need your friend or you to like grab one and pick it, pick it up to get that cool action shot, you can create it. So a lot of times I'll video blog myself, but I know I need to create action, so I'll leave the frame, come back, hey, welcome to Denver, and leave. So you know like you have control over the things that enter and leave the shot, like in regular production. Okay, oh, here's an example. I'll just give you one more video, wait. I've been waiting yeah. all day to say this. Action, I just Hot created action. Dog. And <laughs> I'm lifting. This is biker gyms. This is. Here, wait. I lift the, the, the hot dog into the frame. It's way cooler than just having it. I've been waiting all day to say this. Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's all I wanted to show you is action. Okay, then this is my secret in vlogging. Oops, is Rhea. I'm so bad at this. Sorry, guys. Capture the action, then capture your reaction. This is my two-step formula <laughs> for vlogging. It's top secret, don't tell anybody. No, capture the action, so that means like film the point of view of you coming, or that you could film your feet if the feet are significant, if you're on cobblestone or somewhere sandy, but film, your, film what you see, and then turn around and film you reacting to it. Whoa, where am I, you know, or like, ooh, or like, Ooh, look at that guy. You know, whatever those re action, reaction, right? So get one shot of the action, and then what should the next shot be of me zip lining or what, oh, I'm climbing? I should turn around and go, oh, mama, this is scary. You know, or I should say something would be the reaction. So just to give you an example, horseback riding, you could be filming yourself and then filming the horse point of view. Um, I'm here in a dinosaur fossil place and you can see the fossil and my feet are pretty cool because they're completely, it's huge, it's a huge dinosaur. <laughs> um, this one is a quick History video. History comes to life. You really get to learn about Las Action, Vegas reaction. through these iconic Action. neon signs. Hello, hello friends, Juliana. So all I'm doing is literally talking and showing you what I saw and talking what I saw, right? Sounds so easy, but try that as like first step to just getting your vlog out there. Even on Instagram stories, film your face, film the thing you saw, face, saw. All right, then we're gonna move around. So we're not just gonna stay in one place. If you stay still in this one place, I will kick you. <laughs> we need to move. So you're gonna be, you know, you're on the ground level, you're gonna be climbing up ladders, you're gonna be bending over sideways, you know, you're gonna hide behind bushes um, just to get variety so that it looks cool. Cause like, how boring is it to see everything at eye level all the time? If you're filming yourself, eye level is great cause eye to eye. But if you're filming anything else, what other options do you have, you know? So like for example, I'm filming from the rocks. I'm filming um, from a xylophone point of view. I don't know. <laughs> I'm hiding behind some, some microphone in that last shot. You know, I think just to keep those spicy shots will keep your vlog interesting and entertaining. So this isn't specific to vlogging, but I just, I like to have a lot of options when I'm editing and I really think variety and moving are the two secret, secret sauce. Um, 
Then the story, we're going to go ahead and film, if you can, since we're vlogging, we're almost always going to use the last shot because that's the handheld shot, the close-up. But if you can, give yourself a challenge to go ahead and film with a tripod, a little bit of a medium shot, or even the whole wide shot, the whole body, set it on the floor and walk by to walk into the restaurant or walk out of the restaurant or do both. And then in the edit, decide if you like the walking in or the walking out better. Um, but having the option of seeing different shots of you is so helpful. And we don't always have somebody with us to do that for us. Also, we're talking A-roll and B-roll. A-roll is all the stuff I say that's like the most important stuff. And B-roll is all the cover, cover, you know, uh, covering up all those weird edits. And like if I flub, I can cover it up with the great B-roll I shot. So, so yeah, when I said um, action reaction, the reaction, uh, my reaction, <laughs> um, if I mess up, I just cut to the action and come back to another take where I, I had a better reaction, right? So having the two options are always going to benefit you. Now, when I, when I um, ha started, I started shooting manual, and I had a job in Boulder to film 10 videos. And every one of the 10 travel videos in Boulder was messed up. <laughs> And they were always messed up in a different way. One was messed up because I shot at night and it, I was on daylight temperature and my face looks blue, but like all of the things in the restaurant were warm and tungsten. So I remember being like, well, that looks weird. You know, but I didn't know, I was learning. And, and when I shot um, the next day at the Boulder Boulder Marathon race in the middle, it was like the gain was turned up to like nine and it was grainy. And I was like, whoops, like, you don't need gain. That's like ISO. You don't need like a really high ISO gain in daytime. <laughs> and then when I shot at the tea factory, again, I was shooting outside and then I went inside and it got all green. So anyway, I'm just saying like, it's normal to make mistakes. Give yourself a chance though to make mistakes before you're getting paid. So do those fun projects because the fun projects that you don't get paid for, you can make as many mistakes as you want, yeah? <laughs> um, so some ideas for B-roll, I want to just show you this, this little um, sequence, but I just, I, I know we don't have time to go through all of the, all of these ideas, but I just wanted to throw these at you um, as far as like just options. Do you guys want to see a video, this one's kind of fun, this is one more vlogger video that now that we learned action reaction, I think you're going to really start to see how easy this, this process can be, and I literally filmed the whole talking part at the end of my tour through this cranberry factory, I just talked to my camera for two minutes at the very end before they kicked us out and I had to get on the bus. All the other shots, I spent three hours roaming this factory getting cool video. So let me just show you what this like recipe looks like. Oops, there we go. Today I'm going crazy for cranberries. <laughs> I'm in a cranberry marsh here in Wisconsin. Welcome to Rooted in Red. It just so happens to be harvest season. This doesn't happen all year round. So cranberries actually grow in a sandy soil. So there are vines underneath these bogs. Here in Wisconsin we say marshes. And then they fill the marsh full of water. This machine drives through and loosens the berries from the vine. Did you know cranberries are hollow in the center? The cranberries float to the top. These guys are collecting all of the cranberries, putting them in a big pool and uh, processing them. So lots of action today. So we are going inside a cranberry bog. Ready to cranberry. Let's go. So you wear these funky little So I'll pause shoe there. Pants. Oops. But yeah, you guys see the ideas like it's not it's it's really like mostly the B-roll, but you have to have the reaction or it doesn't feel like it's coming from anybody. It's just a story that doesn't have a point of view. So I added me as this like excited tourist and now boom, I have a vlog. <laughs> right? What's your question? They were part of our tour. Yeah, so they were cool. Um, but yeah, I know sometimes like you said with vlogging you're in the real world and you don't want to film random people that don't want to be in your video <laughs> um, totally so we just have a few more minutes left let me show you another i want to talk a little bit about editing um and then we'll wrap it up but i just wanted you to, to know because this is the question i get the most is like how do you edit everything um, my workflow is a little crazy because i put like one million steps there but i tried to simplify it 
<laughs> I don't want to go too in depth because there's a lot of sessions here about about editing. But for me, I would say I like to look. I like first of all, I copy everything twice. I go through all the footage by putting it all on one timeline, and then that way I don't have to like click and open every clip. It's just like already on a timeline. And then I go through and find the best sound bites. Okay, like, ah, I'm so excited about cranberries. Or the kid, that got, the guy that's like, let's ready to cranberry. I find those cool, funny moments, and then I build around that. Um, I don't really look through all the B-roll. I look through the A-roll, figure out what the best kind of moments are that are fun and silly and to the point. And then I put music down. My, my way is to do music next because I like to kind of get the excited vibe and see like introduction, middle, end. You know, I just kind of get the vibe. So, and then I, I basically add the sexiest B-roll in next around the story that I've already built. And there might be holes because I have so much cool B-roll of like cranberries and then I talk. So there might be a gap but that's where I write a, a sentence later. At the end, I write a sentence that says, did you know cranberries are the fourth largest industry in Wisconsin? Like I just add something that fills it in that gives you more information based on the pacing of the, the story. But I, I prioritize the on-camera talking and I use that filler VO only, only if I have so much great B-roll that I need to like add some more information. But ideally, I would say everything I want to say in the moment. That's how I video blog. Some people do all this after. I just find it's better to like get it out while you're excited in the moment. <laughs> so try to walk away with this whole thing. Um, I use Adobe Premiere Rush for a little sometimes uh, edits in the field. But mostly, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. So here's an example of my timeline, which I'm not going to get too detailed in it. but. Just so you know, I do everything in Premiere Pro. I, I put the, the clips on. I think the purple ones are probably the main camera. Um, the magenta ones are probably text. Um, or And then the yellow is the captions. So I can do so many things. I do color correcting in here. Um, I do music is at the bottom. There's a couple sound effects you can see at the, the, almost the bottom. You'll see like three sound effects. So I'm, I'm kind of organized, at least in like the right, everything that, like one camera is usually, all of the, the me talking would be in the middle of the sandwich, right by the V1 and the A1. And then the B roll is probably at the V2, A2. So the sandwich gets layers. So yeah, that's just a little bit about kind of my, my style for editing. Um, and I definitely like recommend saving your project as much as you can because I changed my mind and I want to go back <laughs> to the last version. Um, you can never learn too many shortcuts because it saves you time. And I like to just color code things sometimes just so that I know, like, especially if my video blog has multiple locations, I might make the restaurant all blue and then the skydiving is all pink. <laughs> and then, you know, the hotel's all yellow or something. So I, I kind of coordinate a little by colors. So um, I don't know, too, some, sometimes people also, I know we're running out of time. If you're curious about on camera, we talked about that in a whole session. So if you have the package, you can watch the on camera uh, talk <clears throat> from yesterday. But just some of my top tips as we walk out the door is to really, like we talked about vlogging and your personality, but <clears throat> this is the best part of having your own show, is what can you do that nobody else can do, right? And when I talk, these are some ways that you'll want to talk to your audience. You could write a script. Maybe you're reading off a teleprompter. I don't recommend that for vlogging because it feels really formal, but I wanted to know you know it's there in case you get scared or nervous. My, my number one would probably be writing talking points down, having it in your phone on the notes tab and being able to go, oh yeah, that's a cool fact. Oh, what's the name of this town? Oh, it's this. Or like, you know, what's the city? You know, you just have those facts in your phone. And then when you get out there, you're actually ad-libbing. So you just say something in the moment, but you look at your fact and then you're like, okay, hi, welcome to, uh, how do you say that? Yeah, welcome to, you know, but you have, you have all the information right there in your hand. Um, I love to 
to talk about wild lines, which are basically the sentences that they're not scripted. So if you're ever in sitting in front of those cheese curds and you're like, oh, 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 ha, ha, these are hot, and then you eat it, it's that those little kind of details that make it feel more immersive. So again, if you're if you're um, at the dinosaur far field where the fossils were, and you're just like, man, that this is as big as my own foot. That's not necessarily in the script, but it's just so cool to hear those like real reactions that you got on camera. Um, that would really that was really what one person would say when they get there. And my number one recommendation um, is to make sure that you film yourself and watch it back. Just like a sports player would play football and you know watch with the coach and the team and say, what am I doing wrong? Why should I do that? You know, we are gonna also watch it back. You're gonna hate that part because it sucks to watch yourself sometimes. You're just like, eh, I hate this. But um, even if you wait like a year, sometimes I'll still watch it and go, wow, it wasn't so bad, Whew. But <laughs> don't be shy to watch yourself. Ask someone who works in our business to watch. You could ask your mom. I know your mom's always going to say she loves you, though. So you know, think about who could give you actual feedback and, and, and help you improve, because there's nothing better than knowing you sucked at it one time and going back and, make, and changing, changing that thing. Like, man, why was I always scratching my nose? And next time, there's no nose scratches, <laughs> right? And you will notice as you are in control. If you can actually edit a sizzle reel, I feel like that's so rewarding because you are putting the best of the best out there. It helps your confidence. But it also, it's like, wow, look at all that I did. And every time I make a sizzle reel, it's so much better than the last one. I have this page on my website called Contests and Competitions which literally shows you the last 15 years of, of me auditioning for projects that like I failed at. But you can see the progress, and that's why I think it's cool to like keep it out there, is like, look, I'm working on it. And you know, you, it's fun to see those old things and laugh, <laughs> right? So anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging with me today. We've been talking about so many great things. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this is my contact info. If you have any questions, um, we, we definitely covered a lot. So we talked about taking your camera with you. We talked about following the story. And we talked about being you. So I hope you guys have fun telling your stories and being your own star of your own show. Please keep in touch. I'd love to see what you're doing. And if you have more questions, I'll stay here. Or you could text me someday, too, if you want to just keep in touch. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.